you guys have been big supporters of the show for a long time. I've been watching. I've been watching you guys since the beginning, honestly. Oh, for real? Uh, but honestly. I didn't want to comment it because I didn't want to like influence you, like make you guys thinking, oh, he's watching this while we're doing this, you know, or anything it's like that. So bad, yeah, no, no, you know, you know what? <laughs> no, but I want you to be. If you see bullshit, call the bullshit. I mean, yeah, seriously. Yeah, you know, and, and we do, and we do, and and yeah. you know, it's actually funny. Mike and I did have that conversation. Like, oh man. You know, we're talking. We, we after we talked to Sherman, we were like, "Oh my God!" You know, you know, we we got to make sure we still stay true to ourselves and how we feel. You know, no, I mean, by all means, you should. You, you should know, definitely. And, and yeah, and we, just, and we there's will. really not much of that. Though. And, I mean, we but, love the, the but show, that's so. the beauty of it. You know, there were a couple things this season that, if you watched, you know, we said that. You know, yeah. um, and, and you know, and the funny thing is, sometimes and look, and we do understand, like it's a, especially what you're doing, and, and unfortunately, we did a lot of this with The Walking Dead. You know, we just we personally, as fans, didn't like the direction or the, even the dialogue that. The Walking Dead had, you know what I mean, which is which is a shot to us as the fans because we started the show doing The Walking Dead, um, right? But your show has has, I would say, ninety nine percent been on point, and there, there there obviously there were a couple things that we may not have agreed with, but we also aren't coming from we're not we're not just a bunch of idiots that are like, oh they did that, oh screw that, that's stupid. We understand right. like what you're doing, how many people you have working on, and what we're seeing on screen is the end result. It's not you know you have all this stuff leading up to two or three actors saying those lines. Right, but, right. Boom, you know, and then the post, obviously. But, like, we understand where that all that goes. So, but, yeah, obviously, you know, to stay true to ourselves, there were a couple things this season, you know, that we were like, we just didn't, you know, had nothing to do with the actors themselves, just the where, right. you know, where some of the stuff went. And, again, sure, sure. That's, but that's us as fans. Obviously, you can't please everybody, you know, but it's not, it's not a game breaker or changer for us at all, you know what I mean? Sure. We, we still love it. And that's, again, that's just me being real with you saying that obviously what we do is you know you know we're not going to come on here we do a dumb youtube show but at the point is it's like we still want to be true to it you know that's why people yeah. like us you know yeah no no exactly you have to be express the opinions that you feel when you see it um cool uh well yeah but hey so what what do you guys want to know um i guess you know what it's just <laughs> if yeah yeah real briefly if you just wanted to you know in your own words, like, what do you, what, what can we expect? Sherman went into a little bit of specifics as far as, you know, there's going to be some new characters, some new locations. What do you feel? I'd like to know what Daniel feels about the second half. Sherman's like, you're going to flip your lids, you know? How, what's your take on it? What do you feel in general? How yeah, I feel in general, like, the, if we were talking about the three seasons as a whole, like, it's like an upside down pyramid, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we started off small. It was a little small plot that got going, and then the second season, the plot became bigger. The, now this third season is getting bigger and bigger, and it is going in that direction right. to this massive, like, crazy kind of ending. And I kind of, when we were doing it, when we were doing the, I was like, where are we gonna go for? Like, we, we, this is like taking it to way beyond the level that we even like thought about when we first started conceiving of this show. Yeah. You know, I had no idea that it was going to get this big, the world was going to get that big. Yeah. And then the topics and kind of the points that we're bringing out, it's much more than just, you know, it started off as a kind of a revenge story. And in fact, I remember the first pilot, um, Vale died in the first pilot oh. and she was killed by Widow. Wow. And then that started me, Sonny, on this kind of revenge spree to get back at Widow, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think it's evolved much more, you know, layer than that Absolutely, since yeah. then, right? It's a much better show than just that simple idea. So to get to where we are now, we're talking about Pilgrim in the Dark Chi and how this is going to affect the whole world. Like, I was worried where we were going with the Dark Chi also for mm -hmm. one point because I'm like, is this going to become like, you know, Last Airbender or that kind of thing where it's like all fantastical right. and like, you know, we're not doing any martial arts and it's just like these hair, air pushes all the time, you know, right. like I didn't want it to end up in that way either. But I think we've been able to integrate it really well into the story and into the characters now. Like I think Babu, who plays Pilgrim, has done a great job of being this like fanatical cult leader that you kind of like, like an fall for yeah, because... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's intimidating, but he's not like Quinn, where he's like creepy and weird. No, and he's stuff. just like, got this. <laughs> he's got this emotional well that he lets out. Yet yeah. He, yet he'll break your friggin' neck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, and like you're drawn to him because you're like, yeah, I kind of buy what you're saying. You're talking about peace and love, right? Oh wait, in a second, you're not. But you never know with him. You never and you know. You saw that side like, like with Cressid and stuff, right? Like he has that that dark side. You yeah. Know? The last few episodes, yeah. we kind of saw even how he was dealing with Nix and the. And Castor even, yeah. 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 And putting yeah. his hands on Cressida that, wow, this guy is... He's not. Know. He's a force. You don't want to so, mess with him. 
So yeah, it's gonna get a little more funky with um, Cressida and him. Yeah. So oh. expect that. <laughs> yeah. well, how, how do you think? Um, how how is Sonny gonna get out of the Meridian Chamber now after what happened with? Well, with, I think with you know, Sonny's realized he made a big fuck up, like yeah. allowing that to happen. Yeah. But you know, he was so single track minded, and I think like any parent would be is like, oh. I'm gonna save my kid. I don't I'm care what it takes. Kid, like, I'm not looking at I don't at care the what fact, it takes or whatever. But now he's like, and, and and I think in part of his mind is that in his own arrogance or maybe in his own yeah arrogance is that I can I can deal with whatever is going to happen afterwards. I just yeah. got to deal with this situation right now. Because yeah. I made think being the right, do you think he made the right choice by <sighs> now? I mean, you would hate to sacrifice Henry. That's the thing. I, I it's don't like... think that he knew exactly what was going to happen or how Pilgrim was going to you know uh heal henry but right like that that's the thing is like as a father myself yeah, yeah. like i don't know what i would do in that situation right. like i couldn't sacrifice my kid i just couldn't sacrifice my kid for a greater good right. it's a theory like you don't know right if that really is going to happen if that's really gonna you know affect the world in that way so sacrifice my kid that's fucking crazy you know yeah. what i mean like <laughs> it's, it's, you not, know? It's, not a, it's not an option yeah so i think i think Sonny took the most logical approach. Is like, don't forget, you know, he sees Ronan now, but he was a he was a regent before. He'd come across crazy situations that he had to lead people through, and so he looks at this. Yeah, it's crazy, but I can take this guy out probably. Mm-hmm. You know, at the, at this point, because I don't think he realized that Pilgrim was going to get the dark power, you know, like that and become, you know, as powerful a being yeah. as he is now. Yeah, you know, yeah. and so I think when it happened is when Sonny realized. Like when like, you oh, saw it happen is when yeah. Sonny realized. Like, oh fuck, I fucked oh, up. Oh man, yeah, like damn it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Give me my kid. Let me get the hot here. <laughs> and that and that was like the that was a great cliffhanger. I felt. Oh, it was, you know, it was a really great cliffhanger. Great. Um, yeah. So we're gonna see that. We're gonna see you know Sonny try his best to rectify this situation. And I think in this, this is truly, really, like, he's coming against big odds. Like, last season, yeah, he's fighting an army of Clippers, um, and he's fighting, and the ultimate fight is with Quinn in the end, but, you know, Quinn is a normal human being, right? Mm-hmm. We've seen that Sonny can't really defeat people with Dark Chi, right? Yeah. So what does that mean for him? What does that mean for him to... You're going to have to get your power back, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, that, that's the thing that has to get explored with Sonny, right? Yeah, and yeah. then the whole, the sister, you know, this idea and of then, the sister. And then the, black, and the Lotus and... and right. And so what you got bigger there? problems coming. That's the, that, that's the whole right. thing. Right. And so then, you know, how is he going to manage all these things coming at him at this moment and then, and then kind of regurgitate it out to, to fight against Pilgrim, you know? Yeah. I think that's what we're going to see with Sonny this season is like, yeah, he or the second half of the season is that he made that mistake. He's recognizing it and then he's trying his best to like gather the troops and push forward. So we're going to see some interesting alliances. I think you're going to see some stuff that you never thought would be possible um, for the sake of, you know, saving the world that they're in, you know, what's left of the world that they're in. You know, that's Uh, the thing where, where you have all set this up for, like the possibilities, especially obviously you and Sherman have been giving us, you know, a direction, which uh-huh. which is amazing. But the possibilities, how do I want to say this? The way you've set this up, the way you've set these dominoes up is that the outcome, whatever, regardless of what it is, is going to be awesome. Like, you know what I mean? Because sometimes a show or a movie sets something up where you're like, okay, but how are they going to do this now in, in a, in a questioning tone here? It's right. like, wherever it goes, it's going to be fantastic. Like, I just think that the way you guys, you took this fantastical, mythical, dark chi, post-apocalypse, you took it all to a spot where it's like from here, when it explodes, it's going to be fantastic. And like in our yeah. hearts, we and feel now we that. have to wait till January. And that's beautiful. <laughs> and we have to wait till January, but I don't know. <laughs> we'll get, yeah. we'll make it through. We'll make it through. Yeah. But I mean, but you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I just, you know, my, my, my hat is off to you guys because again, like this show remains, you know, is, is just, it's, it's tops, man. It's just the writing, everything. That's the beauty of it. This show has it all. And I just can't wait to see, you know, what yeah, it's amazing that we were able to pull this show out because there's so many pieces to this show. There's so many. First of all, the writers' room is in Los Angeles, right? Mm-hmm. We're in Ireland, right? Yeah. We when we started the season, we had the first two or three episodes. No, we had the first four episodes. So that's all we kind of knew. Yeah. And then we started shooting, and then we're getting scripts, and we're like, oh, okay, this is the direction, and you're kind of trying to guide this giant ship yeah. 
around oh, yeah. this plot line, you know, and for it to all fall together and to work is like an amazing thing. Like, I, I don't know people who are not in the business realize like how difficult it is to pull any kind of filming off, you know, right, yeah. any kind of shooting, like a movie or a show, or whatever to pull it off. But then to have all your theoretical pieces fall into line, it's very, very difficult. And, and be continuous and the continuity. Yeah. yeah. Nothing, nothing in your show seems out of place. Regardless right. of time or 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 see actors or or what's happened before, like everything flows. Like when we're watching the show, it's a logical progression. You know what I mean? It's not like, well, why the hell did they cut back to this guy and he's doing this when this? Like it's very logical. It's like yeah, or we're not relying on some kind of VO to explain what happened. Right, you know, yeah. I mean, there is exposition dialogue, but you need that all the time. Yeah, yeah. But but yeah, you're not you're not relying on you know, these tricks or whatever to make it make the flow happen artificially. Um, it just it just happens to work. But yeah. So yeah, we have like the the writers are in LA. There's and then the directors. You know, uh, Sherman was talking about how we shoot two blocks at a time. There's one director for every two episodes, mm -hmm. right? So in 16 episodes, you have eight different directors, right? right? Yeah. And for you know, I've never you know I've always dealt with movies where you have one director, they control everything, right? So to have a director just come in for two episodes and then pop back out again, and but also make something that's integrated within everything else. That's a really difficult feat to do as well, you know. So it's it's pretty it's pretty. This ship is like it's a crazy ship with a lot of moving parts, and it all kind of works. And like that, I think that's an amazing thing about the show as well, you know. And that, you know, this is also what upsets me about the non recognition is that, or even just the lack of eyeballs for the show is like this show is doing a lot of things that a lot of shows can't do mm -hmm. or haven't been able to pull off, and 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 and. No one's really getting the recognition for it, you know. Yeah, yeah. The writers, the editors, the everybody involved. Like everybody works so fucking every, hard on this show e to make it work. Thing. It's everything. It's not like the show does one thing well and everything else is eh. It's yeah, everything. And also, like physically, okay, we're there's bits of people in L.A., there's bits of people in Ireland, there's bits of people in Toronto because all the post production happens there. Right. It's crazy. It, like happens all around the world, and then somehow it gets gelled together and works. You know, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's um it's a big feat and i'm surprised that we're able to pull it off yeah. i mean when i first got into this show i was just hired on to be the executive producer okay. and that was to deal with the fight unit right. and i wasn't playing on playing sunny i was 40 at the time yeah and i was like yo my body i don't know if i can <laughs> handle six seven seasons of this yeah. and also you know in this show i mean if you look at it there's a lot of fighting going on right <laughs> it's like maybe two, three fights per episode, right? And that's way more than a movie. Like if I do an action movie, maybe three to four fight scenes over a five month period of time, right? right yeah. in, in the first season, I remember the first season we shot seven of the 12 fight scenes, right? I was wrecked that I came out of that season. My body was like in pain, right? So when, I, <laughs> when we first you know, were creating the show, I was like, we should cast somebody in their late 20s, early 30s, right? right? Uh, because that's the only kind of person that can handle it for if we go eight seasons, you know. Like f right now, I'm not sure how physically how I'm going to handle it for oh. the next season. But I figured it out over the past three seasons. I figured out how to like train and 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 work my body so I don't get injured and don't oh, whatever. Yeah. Like the first season was rough. First season I got a lot of injuries, just old man injuries. Right, yeah. um, and then and then worked it all out. And now second season, third season is is totally fine. But. Cool. At the time, yeah, we were trying to cast a young kid for it. And, um, you know, they wanted the lead to be Asian-American. They wanted him to be a good actor, but also have martial arts skills uh, to be an English speaker because there's plenty of Asian actors that can do it, but if they don't speak English, it kind of right. defeats the purpose of the show. And then and to have some name. And so that's a very small yes. pool of people. Yeah. Even, and, but we even auditioned hundreds of people. We auditioned, like, martial arts kids from around the, the country and stuff like that. And it, we simmered it down to like five people, and it still wasn't what we wanted. Um, yeah. And then finally, the producers all turned to me like, "Daniel, you know, you know, this is kind of made for you, right?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, but I haven't done action in like five years. Like, I had torn an ACL, I broke my broke my ankle, and oh. these are all outside of filming stuff. And I yeah. knew, having been managed by Jackie Chan for eleven years and seen the the chronic pain that he's in. Oh yeah. Wow. Like that. Like you're a big fan of Jackie. It's like yeah. It's hard to see that. It's really hard to see mm -hmm. that. Like he, I worked on a film with him where he needed to be helped to stand up out of oh. his chair. But then he fights like a motherfucker. He can fight so yeah. well. 
And when he's in movement, he's fine. It's like when he's sitting down and not moving that the pain comes, right? Yeah, yeah. And then he had to be helped to sit back down again, right? Yeah. And now he's like, oh, I think he's over 65 now. He's still doing it. Yeah, he's still, you know, he's yeah. still doing it. And so I made a conscious decision. Like when I started getting these injuries, I'm like, okay, I'm going to put this on the back burner, uh, martial arts stuff. So yeah. I was, in Hong Kong, I have a much... I'm known for a much broader range of different things, right. not just action, right? Yeah. I do, I do, you know, romantic comedies. I do indie movies. I do art house films, or whatever. Yeah. So I was heading in that direction and not, and staying away from the action for like the past five years. So when Badlands came along, I was like, eh. right? You know, I'm not sure. But then as we worked on it more and more, I fell in love with the character and the story and the world they were building. I'm like, it's really working. It's really yeah. we're really integrating like that Hong Kong style with an American style. And that, and also we're doing something that no one's ever done before. You know, the original idea, I have to tell you this, is that um, one of the execs who's no longer at AMC now, his idea was like, why don't we do Kung Fu, reboot Kung Fu, the TV series? Oh. And I was like, eh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you know, that was a cool show that it introduced America to Shaolin, but like the action was terrible. Mm -hmm. And like, it was a good show for like martial arts philosophy, but it wasn't a cool show for anything else. And that right? should have Bruce Lee. I'm sorry. It should have Bruce yeah, Lee. Yeah, no, totally, it's, totally. Yeah, and that's not... also part of the, the show is like, I feel like we righted the wrong that happened to Bruce Lee and that mm -hmm. it, was, it was Bruce Lee's idea, right? And right. they didn't want to cast him as as the lead because they didn't weren't sure if America was ready for an Asian American lead at right. the time in the 70s. Yeah. And I get it. At that time, it's yeah. the 70s, right? 60s, 70s. I get it. But now we're able to write that wrong. But anyway, so yeah, they wanted to do that show, and I was like, yeah, well, mm -hmm. why, why reboot? Like, I hate reboots anyway, and I was just like, why reboot that show? Right. You know, let's do something fresh and original. So then we go, okay, let's do something post-apocalyptic, right. because that way we can comment on, we can do whatever we want, first of all, but we can also comment on, you know, American society today, which is what I kind of was very interested in, um, and then refer to a bunch of other stuff as well, and then create it in that world, in that realm. And that makes sense. Like, okay, we, we created this idea that there are no guns, um, and then and then the world that we're in that that it's a ruined America and it's the, things are restarted over again. And therefore, you know, this this idea of martial arts becomes much more important because you have to protect yourself in there. And then that's the that was the genesis, and it went from there. And then you know, Alan Miles came on board and they created that whole world. And once I saw that kind of the Bible that they made for it, I was like, yo, this is a, this is, good. This is a good project. I'm like, okay, now, now I'll consider doing it. And that's when I, I trained for a little bit for a couple of months, got back into it again. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm 40, but my body is still acting okay. It remembers, okay. yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. So then I got back into it and then just committed to it and I never, haven't regretted a minute okay. of it we're happy, since man. We're happy until we got snubbed yeah, well, and then I'm well, like why yeah. am I doing this like I why know. am I yeah, putting I my body on the line and everybody else putting their body on the line to get you know some recognition for it and not to get the recognition is just like a travesty to me I know so yeah but you know but hey you know you have us we love you that you, you obviously yeah. know you're you guys are absolutely loved all you guys are absolutely loved you know uh, um, definitely that's one, one thing I want to say is that like I really want to send my love to the fans because they really showed so much support for the show over the time you know yeah. when from the very first episode there was so much crazy love just like oh dude we've been waiting for this forever we've been yeah. wanting to see this and it was like that was so satisfying because it was like you know you see a desire for something you create that product and then you give it to them and people eat it all up and it's such a such a satisfying feeling for that you know as a creator as someone who who makes things for an audience you know um and and to have that support all the way through is what really keeps us all going, yeah. you know. And and it also makes like everybody that works on the show just so proud of it, you know. It's proud of it that they feel that love, you know. Yeah, it's just we, that we can understand why you're, you know, you're the whole cast. Everybody yep. is so passionate. Everybody's such a family, and we understand, ex you know, why you feel the way you do. Um, maybe we yeah. can rally something for for season four and make sure we uh, we don't have that happen again. I know. We all right. So we know, need Comic Con. <laughs> we got to get you in there next year. Okay, we got a lot of work to do. Um, <laughs> but before that, let's Mike. Let's ask him. We got all right. Since since we're on these topics, sure. Daniel, what what's your favorite fight scene? All right, we'll do this a little better. Uh, what's your uh, either favorite fight scene, moment, or kill? Whatever you want to answer. Oh, it's tough. That's know, so it's tough. Lot. There's, there's lot. so many good ones. It's so tough. Um, this season, for me personally, I really like the RV fight because I feel yeah. like that's. Oh up my Sun god, yes. I said I felt like I set up Sonny for the whole season. Basically, his yeah. state of mind, where he came from from last season, the idea that like he doesn't really want to fight anymore, but if you fuck with his kid, yep. 
Yep. He'll fuck you up. Yeah. You know, but it's oh, he's still yeah. a killer inside, right? Yeah. yeah. And so, and then, and then the drinking at the end of it, but that whole, the, and you know, honestly, that you know, the bit with picking up Henry with the bloody face and drinking and sitting on the sofa there, that was all kind of ad libbed at the end. Oh, nice. Like Stephen and I were on set and we we're like, what can we do to make this scene like feel really real? And kind of odd at the same time. I was like, what if I'm like cradling him and I'm all bloody and shit, you know? Yeah. And acting like a dad. Like, I just murdered these people, but my instinct is to take care of this son. That, and it just shows it in one picture without any dialogue. It just showed what Sonny's state of mind is. It's like, I'm protecting this boy, yeah. you know, and no one's going to stop me from doing that, you know? And I, I think it was a great scene because, you know, it was a cool fight. But also, it was really poetic in that way, and also it was symbolic of of, of Sonny's state of mind, and it's and it really kind of gave the audience like this is where Sonny is right now. Yeah, yeah. You, you, know? you guys are so good at pulling because even like like Sherman had said, you know, you know, we we ad lib this and we ad lib that at the end. Like you guys are fantastic at that, which which is a testament to not only your acting chops but your understanding of the character and understanding what the situation calls for. You guys yeah, are works. so good at that. Like, you know, like yeah, it doesn't think, surprise me at all that you ad lib that because you, you guys are so good at that and you know what it and and man, that absolutely showed. And like you just said, exactly what we said on that episode was that boom, there's Sonny. That's Sonny for this season. You have all these elements, but in the end of the day, that's his son and he's gonna do what he has to do. Right. We kept thinking that, that you know, the bit in the end where he cradles Henry and like sits there for a drink, we thought that was gonna get cut. We're like, we'll just film this part anyway, yeah. but it might get cut because it might because it extends the fight. It's a long yeah. period of no dialogue, and like studios hate that, you know, when there's yeah. like just empty air. But it really shows so much, and then we're like, okay, let's submit it to post and see what happens. And then they left it untouched, completely right. untouched. And great. they know too. See, they know too. They know. They know what makes right. it so good. That's yeah. great. Yeah, Ooh. I mean, that, so that was my favorite, my personal fight. Yeah. I would have to say that also this season, probably one of my favorite fights is the Moon Widow fight on the tower. Because yeah. that shit was hard to pull off. Wow, like yeah. it was so hard. That tower was real. That was a real yeah. tower. Oh my god. We we can see it from our um, production facility. Is a, we're we're in like a we're thirty minutes outside of Dublin, mm -hmm. in a. Um, this is also really interesting. Our our production facility was a resort built up till like two thousand and seven. It was being built. Um, it got ninety percent finished, and then the crash, the financial crisis happened crashed they were like 20 30 million euro short from completing it oh. and they went bankrupt oh. so this is like but it's like a spa resort for like a thousand people it's big yeah. like there's hotel buildings all over the place there's a big spa building that's our main production facility yeah. and so we took over that whole property to film on so we build our sets all over the place and because we're post-apocalyptic having an unfinished building is great <laughs> perfect yeah. you know and so and so um what was i getting at why was i talking about this Oh, you um, see the tower from your facility. Oh, yeah, yeah. So from there, yeah, anyway. So from across the way, there's this tower. And we saw that. And we're like, that would be awesome if we could do a fight. And then we kept thinking that the producers would, like, block us or whatever. And then this season, we're like, let's do a fight there. Let's actually, let's make the main, the first fight there. And so we did it. And it was hard because it, that hill that it's on is facing the ocean. Yeah. And, you know, Atlantic Ocean, is some strong winds come through there. And so, like... We have like 180 foot cranes hanging over the top of the tower oh God, to yeah. hang them all, right? Wow. So we have actors on wires like yeah. 80 feet up in the air and the winds get crazy. So like we have a guy on set that has to judge when it's unsafe for us to be up there yeah. and they have to bring it all down and we have to wait for the wind to stop and then bring them back up again. And like not even for an actor, for a stuntman, it's scary. Yeah. It's really scary. Like that the stair that goes wraps around the the tower the missing pieces those are actually missing pieces yeah. and we just integrated that stuff into the fight because we weren't going to actually build stuff into that they don't allow you to build stuff onto it so there was right. no we couldn't add anything to that tower so they just had to deal with the existing That's condition it. and i think it was five days total and then we went back for another day so six days total wow on that one and both those guys, like Sherman and, and Emily up there on the on those wires, like I give them a lot of credit for yeah. that. Because I think two or three years ago, they would have never imagined they would be in that kind of <laughs> <Yeah>. situation. <laughs> you know, um, oh, yeah, crazy. that was good. But then there's how about a kill? So many... How about a kill? What was your one of your favorite kills that you can think of? Hmm. See, we ask the tough questions here. <laughs> yeah, it's like I used to keep tabs, but like you know, there kept okay. being so many. So many and so many that I just couldn't. I don't know. I liked 
Killing Quinn was cathartic. Yeah. But I think one of my first kills was the most interesting one to me was like the in the season one in that rain fight when we yeah. flip onto the car and then I yeah. flip the sword and stab the guy through that one. Yeah. I feel like that set the tone for the rest of the show. Yeah. It was like how these fights are going to be. They're going to be really complicated, really intricate. Yeah. And actually, to this day, that fight was kind of one of the more fun ones to yeah. do. Um, yeah. It was crazy complex. It was six days in wet rain, mm-hmm. you know, the whole time. Um, and so you're wet, you know, it's hard to be, you know, in a wet costume for six hours and your underwear is wet. And you, know? like, yeah, and you have to jump right in it. Yeah, like, you know, um, and also it was interesting cause that studio that we were in, it was in new Orleans. That was our first season. Um, they had to turn the air conditioner on cause the lights up above was really hot. It was like 115 degrees up above, but down below for us, it was like 40 degrees. So yeah. it was cold for us in that fight. Um, and that was six days. It was kind of our first really big, intricate fight. There's a lot of complexities there, but there was a lot of, like, we did, I don't know if you remember in that bit where I fight, I chase this guy, we get thrown through a window, yep. then you see me appear in a shadow. That was like a bait and switch. There was three different stuntmen involved in all of that, oh, cool. right, to get that one Sunny going through all that whole sequence. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was that bit where we run up the side of the car and come down. There was a flip onto the car. Um, you know, it was, we whipped out all the tricks that we possibly could in that one fight scene that we knew that we were going to use for the rest of the season because we wanted to show the studio also yeah. what could, we could do. What you can do. Uh, and what else did we do in that? Um, the, the slow motion shots, the mood shots of like spinning and the jacket flowing and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I think that fight kind of really established our style for the whole rest of the season. Yeah. You know, and so that was probably one of my I think it was one of the most important fights for us. Yeah, to make. I, yeah, I agree. Well, I mean, okay, for you guys, well, what what have been your favorite fights? I, Octopus Market fight that was great too. You know, yeah. like that was that. See, yeah. that was that was definitely. We, we had a little bit of. Uh... See, so I I love. <laughs> see, so I love you. You go. You got to go back to those old. You know, even Jackie Chan's films. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's use anything you can when you can. You yeah. know, and I I I understood. I loved it. I was like, yeah. yeah, like that's that's cool to put those elements in there, and then to have you know Nick Frost Baggies do it. You know, for him to do <laughs> yeah. it. You know yeah. what I mean? Because he's he's got such a unique fighting style himself. Yeah. You know, and I call I like to call him the reluctant fighter. Like he can do yeah. it, but he'd rather be like, uh, I either want to talk my way out or just get out of here. Yeah, he'll save his energy. You know, he's, right, exactly. he's actually a true a true martial artist would try to get their way out of a fight instead of right. fight fight. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so. No, that was that was that was great. That was so fun. I yeah, loved it, man. It was. I mean, I, I had to agree with you with the RV, the RV scene, um, in so many way, you know, reasons, uh, you know, that that you said to to us. I think that after season two with with Vale dying, Chris and I had spoke about. Now, is there going to be a caretaker for Henry? How is Sonny going to be able to? Um, you you can't just be the dad. I didn't think, yeah. especially with everybody that's that's after you and and whatnot. So, um, just that father son dynamic, I think, is was, was great. In, great in motivation. It's it's yeah. It, the the motivation and what he and what you know you've been able to do with Sonny as a father, caring for Sonny. I'm um, um, for, for, for Henry, but in the meantime, still being Sonny, like still you know like yeah. yeah. We had our ideas. Will Lydia, you know, be his caretaker? right? Oh, we were completely right. wrong about all that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Um, we it, yeah, it was, we were thinking it was going to be hard for you to be able to ha- take care of the son and do what you're. Yeah, it, it is definitely a challenge as an actor to play that. You know, you you have this loving side, but then he's this cold-hearted killer the uh, other side. You know, yeah. and how do you balance that out? And I think you don't need to just let it happen. Like right. when he needs to be the father, he's the father, and when he needs to be the badass, he's the badass. It just yeah. it just flows like that. And I, and I was really worried about it. I was like, oh, this is like seems inconsistent with the character. Like, but that's the interesting part about watching it is like, yeah. oh, he's, he is awkward with the son sometimes. Like, mm-hmm. you know, he doesn't know well, what to do with it. When you're fighting him, but... and he's in like a little back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I really, I really love that scene. I don't know why. I love that. I mean, <laughs> Poor there was neck, supposed I don't to, know. I, I can't remember if that made it into the edit because we had to shoot that separately, yeah. which is there's supposed to be a shot of the baby laughing. <laughs> oh um, yeah. While we're while I'm flying through the air, but I'm not sure if we ever got it because it's it's hard to get. It's hard to work with the baby dudes. <laughs> it's very 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 hard to work with the baby. We have like three of these babies yeah. that come to set, and it's like we just grab whatever one that is feels like working that day, yeah, you oh know. My God. <laughs> and so and so um, and a lot of times the close up close ups of the baby 
of their rea- of his reactions yeah. and those kind of things we shoot on a different day altogether oh, because yeah. we just can't fit it in in that day so i'm not sure if it made it into the the edit but there was supposed to, in the in this kind of story the way we storyboarded out is like when i'm jumping through the air doing that sidekick there's a cut shot of him like, laughing hey. inside yeah. yeah having like a fun time <laughs> yeah. but i think there's a lot of comments about like shaking baby syndrome and, yeah, and shit like yeah, that yeah. It was, a, it was a, as great as it was like the fight scene when when you know Baji Furtz, you know when you guys meet his ex-wife that whole scene in that on the ground place you know fan, great great scene where he's like you're gonna help me and you're like nah and then you're yeah. like fine you know and then when you start doing all that stuff we're like yeah hold on <laughs> there's a gonna... baby back there <laughs> yeah. right. you forget that like oh he's got the baby on his back but you know what it's it's all fine it all works out and you know we were well, originally that that pack was supposed to be a baby bjorn oh, on the my front gosh, yeah. right but then we realized like a 10 month 11 month old baby is huge it's yeah, really huge it's not... so it would have been really funny to have this Things flailing arm like thing all across my chest i mean we actually really explored it and we had put a dummy baby in I moved around like this looks fucking silly. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's gonna be m- too comedic. Yeah. Like, it's funny to have the baby in the back, I think. But if you see flailing arms, and also you, you know, you can't really do it and make it look good right. because if you can't put a real baby in while we're fighting, right? right. Yeah, and then so it's gonna a, look like a fake. Thing. You put a silicon baby in there, the arms are gonna look fake and stuff like that. So we're like, nah, let's go to this backpack thing. And I really hate that backpack. It's really yeah. heavy. Oh, yeah, man. my back was it, for the first three months it was killing me that thing and then finally i got used to it but yeah. it was a terrible <laughs> terrible oh. thing to have on because it weighs like 30 pounds it's crazy and have to fight with that thing on oh my god and we yeah. also have we had a fight version made but like the first fight like almost all our props that are meant to be lighter and easier to work with they break yeah. like the first first move we do on them so then i have to use the real one like remember the stocks from last season yep yeah at the very beginning so we made like a balsa wood one for me to fight with. And then I go into the fight scene. The first move I do, the whole thing exploded, oh. right? So I'm like, shit, what do we do? And I'm like, do we have another one? No. I'm like, okay, give me the real one. So oh. I put the real one. I just did the rest of the fight with the real one. on. It's like 30 pounds of wood on my shoulders. But you, you know, know what? That's re- See, but, you know, for the film, for fi- that's real. So those, that yeah. weight that you're putting behind it, oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. real. Like yeah. we, and, yeah. and it obviously it comes off that way, you know. So it just makes yeah, it better. That, it kills you, yeah, but it makes yeah, it look no, better. I totally, I totally like that authenticity. Like yeah. I'd rather suffer through it to make it look real than than to have something look for the fake. Art, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> for the art. Meanwhile, you you look at your medical bill. You're like, damn it. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why I have a slip disc now. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. No, that's great. Yeah, I mean this this season, you know, I mean. Dude, we can go on and on for hours and hours about this stuff. You know, <laughs> it's just, it's just amazing. Um, you know what? Maybe, maybe we'll cut, maybe we'll cut you loose now. I mean, honestly, we really could talk for hours, but I don't want to keep you too long. You know, you, you know, um, you gave us quite a bit. You gave us, you gave us a lot. Sure. Um, we'd love to have you on again. Sure. Um, you know, uh, you know, like I said, I think Mike and I, you know, we have till January, so we're gonna try and pull up a lot of videos, man. So. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll get to, uh, yeah, a lot more theory. We're going to pull again, up some theory stuff for you. Again, you know? we're, we're so happy that you came on the show. Absolutely. You and Sherman, obviously. Um, and uh, we'll see what we can do cool. about that. Sn- these snubs that we uh, comic con. We got to work yeah. on that. Yeah, we got to get all right, So anyone listen out there, you know what that means? We got to get you. on. Board. Yeah, it's this is an interesting thing, because like, you know, I definitely felt like there's snubs have happened in my career in the past, but mm-hmm. none, none of them have angered me as much as this one, yeah. like because this one is like. It's not just you. It's it's yeah. Everybody. It's not just me, but yeah. also it's very obvious. Yeah. You know, it's very obvious that we should be in that category, right? Yeah. It, we're one of the only shows doing that. Like when you say best actor or whatever, that's you know, it's hard to judge what is the best acting. Like right? what moves other people is different, right? But this is like saying you know uh, best color in a film or something like that. Yeah. If there's a lot of color and everything else is black and white. And we're not in that realm, and then a black and white thing gets nominated. It's like, well, what's going on? Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? Like, what's happening here? And so that's what I felt. I felt totally slighted. I felt it's been three years. It should be in the general consciousness now, you know, yeah. but it's not. So I think that is part of the problem. And so that so the anger comes from not just being snubbed. I'm not just mad at the Emmys. I'm just mad at the whole thing in general. And like, yeah. why aren't more people aware of this? Why, yeah. if they're not watching the show, they should at least know that the action is top notch. You know, because we work so hard to bring it to people. And and again, again, what you're saying earlier is that, like, there are so many people involved in this that pour their heart and soul into it. And all the stuntmen love working on this show because there are stuntmen on other shows 
that do boring action, right? Yeah. And these are all really seasoned martial artists. Like the Summon world is very interesting. So I want to diverge on this for a That's little great. bit, but um, I feel that there needs to be a change in the stunt world in general because well, how it works now is that there are stunt coordinators and the stunt coordinator kind of controls this whole pyramid of the team, right? right. And so they hire on stunt men, they help create the action, they might hire choreographers and blah, 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 and then they're the ones that put it all together. And But there is no system for stunt men like actors where you go audition for a role. It's like, oh, I heard that this guy is good, so come on over oh. and whatever. It's still that old school, old, you know, Word of you mouth. Know type of yeah. thing, right? Word of mouth thing. And then the other thing is that I think there's definitely a level of insecurity now that action has become so much more complex and it's not just like big haymaker swings, you know, anymore. Mm -hmm. That those guys are coordinators that have been doing that kind of fighting for so long and don't know how to do this new school style stuff are a little bit resistant to these the new school style coming in. You know what I mean? Yeah. It threatens them a little bit, you know. And so the whole system, it's weird because the rest of Hollywood, all the system is pretty much democratized. You know, if you want to get into acting, you know, you start off trying to be an extra, you know, you, you get you get, a, you get in with a casting agent or you find an agent. There's a system to be able to get in, but with stunts, it's not. And I feel like part of it is also is like the, the skilled, really skilled stuntmen, sometimes there's a jealousy against them, right? Like oh, yeah. stuntmen that just do more than just falling off a building or whatever. Like, to me, those are really easy stunts. I have to paint a picture for you. When we were in New Orleans, uh, we were auditioning stunt people for the show, right? And we saw lots of people. I saw like 80 people. Wow. And with resumes like G.I. Joe, this, this, that, Transformers, blah, 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 blah. And like, I was like, okay, do a basic front flip fall. And they couldn't do it. They couldn't do a lot of things, right? Yeah. And not mention like, and then we would give them like 11 move choreography. Right, like you know, it's a lot for someone who doesn't know anything, but for someone who knows something, it should be pretty easy, right? right yeah. Couldn't couldn't get it, like couldn't get it, and I was like, these are stuntmen, these are working stuntmen that don't do it, and then and then I hear, and then we finally got like elite or more elite like martial arts stuntmen, yeah. and we and I hear like stories like where you know they're often pushed down because they have skill sets that other people don't have, and so people, there's a jealousy involved. Yeah, they you don't know. get picked. Yeah, it's like... Yeah, or or they get hired by a stunt coordinator to help coordinate a martial arts fight, but they don't get the credit for it. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, um, yeah. And, the, and so, like, that world needs to change a little bit, I think, you know, and, and it's allowed to be that way because it is seen as, like, a male macho type of thing, yeah. but I think it, there needs to be a change in that system, a more integrated way of bringing stuntmen to productions because it was so hard finding our core team yeah. of people. Like, I basically ended up going to YouTube and looking at, like, oh, typing wow. up demo reels and then seeing people. Like, so so this girl, um, uh, Mickey Facinello, she's the du uh, double for The Widow. She's, like, amazing martial artist. Like, so if you find her on YouTube, her demo, you'll see. Like, what she, what I, when I found her, she, she and her boyfriend at the time had recreated um, a Jackie Chan fight that was uh, Meals on Wheels. Yeah. With um, Benny the Jet, yeah, and and Jackie and her boyfriend played Jackie, and she played Benny the Jet, and they did it shot for shot, move for move. Wow! Right? I check that out. And I was like, okay, we need to get that girl like on on the show. So yeah. the, her credentials were at the end of the the YouTube thing. I got our stunt coordinator to call her, and she came, and now she's been the widow's double for three years now. That's you know? insane. That's so um, cool. Yeah, and so like I had to go through you know basically YouTube to find all these people. It wasn't. And also, even like stunt coordinators are very seasoned. They don't. They can get a bunch of guys together to do dangerous things, but they ne not necessarily know all the skilled like martial artists, you know. And it was very hard to put this team together. Our yeah. core team is like twenty people, men and women, that are there all the time. And it's unlike under any other TV show because I think most other TV shows they have a stunt unit. And then they hire day players on for the the fight, and then they go away. Right. And the, yeah. And they're not there all the time. Our stunt guys, their core team is there, the whole entire time we're filming. Right, yeah. And they're working every single day. I mean, they're working on other stuff right now, and they're like, "Oh, these jobs are so easy compared <laughs> to, to what we're doing on Badlands." But they're there because they're able to show a side of their talent that they're never often show that much, you know, yeah. because they're mostly doing silly falls or running away from a car, yeah. you know, or jumping over somebody, you know, those kind of stuff. But they're not doing, you know, flowing martial arts, you know, long shot sequence stuff. Yeah, and they, yeah. they love it, 
you know, and for them to not get credit for it, it's just like, it sucks. Yeah, it really, and that's really... another thing. That's yet another thing that your show provides for the industry. You guys are literally breaking the mold. You're, you're creating your own thing, like your own genre. You're creating, right. like, you're creating a new, a new thing for, for stunt people with those skills to be involved in. You know, and yeah, because most of those guys got into stunts because of watching movies, like got yeah. into martial arts stunts because of watching movies. Like one guy, Andy Long, on our show, he's part of the Jackie Chan stunt team. He's the sixth generation there now of the Jackie wow, Chan stunt yeah. team. But he's on our show. He's he's the guy that um in the RV fight that pushed his head on the shopping cart and yeah. spiked him through the head. <laughs> that guy. So he's like twenty something. He learned most of his stuff from watching Jackie Chan. Wow. Right? Yeah. And he's the kind of guy that does like crazy falls like he'll do a spin crash into a wall bang onto a table and onto the floor wow, yeah. and he'll just do he'll just throw himself into it right because <laughs> he because he he loves doing that right yeah. and it's like he can do it now because he's 20 something <laughs> right but like yeah. not many people do that anymore everyone's like oh well you know i need to be this kind of pads or i need to be like on this or whatever or can we do it cg you know but he's like yeah. into doing it the old school way and like and this show allows him to do stuff like that. That's right? what this show is. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah. why for someone like me that loves all those movies that you grew up on, that I grew up on, like, that was all done practically. Those guys yeah. threw them, yeah. all of Jackie's chance, all, all the crew that he went to school with and grew up with and created all the things, they all just did it. They killed themselves. And that's what, this show is so realistic. It's realistic and right. genuine. And, and I heard one comment from a, a younger person saying that, People, when they see our fight scenes, like young kids, because they're so used to seeing like Marvel CG fights, yeah. they just assume it's all CG. Yeah. So then they're, see, that's the thing with me. It's like, well, it's a now that I watch, a compliment I, think to you. So, yeah, might be, yeah. <laughs> I guess so. That good. But see, like when I watch uh, uh, a comic book movie and I watch the action, like Spider Man, it's like the flipping and all that stuff, I know it's not a real person doing it. I know it's a motion capture thing and blah, blah, blah. So I'm not, I'm just watching it. But when I watch like something like Crouching Tiger or whatever, I'm like on the edge of my seat because I know physically these people are putting themselves in danger. Whether it's stunt people, doubles, or actors, it's, it's someone physically doing that yeah. something crazy, right? Yeah. So it's like watching you know a crazy skate trick or you know a big air contest or whatever. You're there because it's like whoa, that's fucking crazy, and someone might get hurt, you know, or maybe someone did get hurt in that doing that stunt. Yeah. And that's why you get you know emotionally invested into it. Yeah. Whereas when it's CG, I kind of just sit back. Like when I watch Transformers and see big robots fighting, like it doesn't, I don't feel it. Like, yeah, but it's kids like, that's do. cool so, looking in a way, but. But kids that grew up watching that stuff, when they then look at our stuff, they don't get emotionally excited about it like we do because they don't realize mm -hmm. that there's yeah. people like putting themselves on the line. Or like in that tower fight that is fucking windy up there and there's like, they're 80 feet up in the air floating around on wire, on, yeah, on like, yeah. like on a wire like a little bit thicker yeah. than this, you know? Wow, man. So. So it's it's um, it's interesting to see like yeah that that young and younger uh, how they yeah, how they take it how they look at it yeah how they look at it but yeah for us old school people we know what goes into it and that's what that's what we made the show for is for you guys yeah. to that that love that stuff and to be able to see it on your you know on American TV in English you know and it's free even yeah yeah. You know, you're not paying, you know, you don't have to go to some Chinese store and then watch subtitles for you. Right, yeah. Yeah. But that may be it. We might be a little bit ahead of our time. And that also happens, too, is, like, a lot of shows that were too ahead of their time didn't get the red recognition until they were canceled. So we might, unfortunately, might be. Wow. Uh, well, you know what? I'm, what I'm, you know, I, I, feel, I feel, and I hope I'm right, your show is in a spot where I believe you are ahead of your time. And, again, across the board, every category. But, but I think you might just be under that. I feel like you guys, because your story's great, the action's great, the actors are, are wonderful, the dialogue, everything is so good that I feel like you might just get underneath that. Like you're saying, like th these shows go away because they weren't, people weren't ready. But I think you guys might just be under that. Meaning you guys right. are going to get the run you, you deserve. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I just, I, I, I just wonder where that tipping point is and yeah. what is it that's going to... Just nudge it over, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it just it just needs a little nudge, and it'll be there because because it's not like let's say Firefly for example, right? Right? Great show, good concept, good dialogue and stuff, but but production was cheap. Mm -hmm. It seemed a little cheap, you know. So there's things you can poke at it, but our show like you can't really poke 
a hole in anything, right? No, like we, you can see we spend money on it. Yeah. It's one of the most expensive shows out there. It's the most know? legit. Um, it is literally the most legit show. The writing is tight. The costumes are good. The cinematography is good. There's nothing cheesy or or, or done wrong about it that you would question yeah. about it. So so it's there. So it's a matter of just getting the eyeballs to it. You know yeah. what I mean? So. So I don't know what that tipping point is, but uh, hopefully we'll find it very soon. Yeah. Well, right. listen, well, I think I think we've had you long yeah. enough. Like I said, we yeah. can sit here for hours. But uh, Daniel, once again, is, it, is there anything, la uh, last, last uh, things you want to put out there? or? Uh, no, I think that pretty much covers it. Pretty yeah. much covers it, right? AMC, yeah. Well, AMC watches our shows, right? So maybe we'll, we'll, we'll speak to them. This is a call to, to AMC. Them and say, right. Right. Whatever we can do. You need us, we'll help you. Whatever yeah. you right. need to do, we'll come out. But right. the thing is, you know, yeah. Daniel, once again, thank you very much for being here. Absolutely. Um, you know, what, what you what you've talked about is important for so many different things on so many different levels. And yeah. again, it's just two guys on the internet saying our hats are off to all of you. We love you guys. You guys are beautiful what you're doing. Please keep it up. And um, you know, hopefully we'll see Daniel on our show again. Yeah. And you guys, people watching this. You're watching Badlands. We know you are, so we don't have hey, to, thanks, to guys. watch it. But. I want to say thank you guys for your support and for you know creating this channel for this show. Um, I, you know, Honestly, it helps for promoting and all that, but it also motivates us. Like cool. This season was the first season that we were still filming when the episodes were airing. Oh, yeah. Okay. So so I'd pop this on YouTube on the makeup trailer while we're all getting our makeup done. Oh, for real? For people to just listen. To get them, you know, I'm a producer also, so I want that. Yeah, it was a hard season. Me. By the seventh, eighth month, actors were like... People were going crazy because it's a long time to be in in one project for that long. And then yeah. the adverse conditions, cold, and it's tough, you know, and the fighting is really hard. And for them to hear, like, people that love the show so much, yeah. uh, it really kind of gave them an extra motivation to push oh, through great. to the that's, end of the season. So, so good. all of your nice comments and your excitement for the show, like, oh, really man, helped yeah. everybody. Music to our ears. And that, right. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep it coming. We'll definitely that's keep right. it yeah. coming for you guys. But also, again, like I was saying earlier, don't let that affect the way you guys talk about it. If you see bullshit, call it out. No. Yeah, we gotta keep that. you honest, right? Because yeah. we want you to stay Honestly, on. Honestly, at the end of the day, I prefer yeah. I, I prefer criticism over, um, you know. Uh, so, uh, right, we got. Yeah, it. yeah. So. Cool. Uh, all right, so that's it, Daniel. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Chris. Thank uh, you for everything. Thank you. Where Where can they get you? Where, where can they hit you up? Uh, you can hit me on my Instagram mostly, which is uh, that Daniel Wu at that Daniel Wu, um, and then it all pushes to my Twitter. Okay. And uh, uh, my Facebook and the Twitter is Daniel Wu Yanzu is my Chinese name W U Y A N Z U. Check us out on Instagram. We'll be posting a bunch of stuff. We'll get some clips from the interview and we'll put some good stuff up there. Check us out on Facebook, of course, at Third Person Pod, and have a listen to this uh, on iTunes as well if you'd like. Yep. So that's it. Again, Daniel, thank you very much for being here. Thanks, guys. We'll Take see you care. next time for Into the Badlands. Thank you. Peace. If you want to see more of our interview with Daniel Wu, click that video on the left. Also, if you miss the 80s like I do, then head over to the Retro Squat YouTube channel where the 80s are alive and kicking. Or click one of those videos.